E gridate, 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 sai a me che me ne importa. E parlate, parlate, io fingerò di ascoltarvi per l'ennesima volta. L'euro ha avuto un impatto sulla crisi finanziaria europea? Se sì, come è accaduto? Did the euro currency have an impact on the European financial crisis? If yes, how did it have this impact? Okay, so what the dynamics in Europe with the euro were that Europe it was it was set up based on the traditional mainstream export model. And what an exporter does, what somebody who desires to export does is they keep fiscal policy tight. And the Maastricht Treaty was set up to keep fiscal policy tight, 3% deficit limits, 60% debt to GDP, with some enforcement provisions for violators. At the same time, and this is much uh, what Germany did when Germany was uh, had its own currency, the mark, and was uh, exporting. However, what this policy does is it, it keeps domestic demand down, but it also keeps, and it makes the currency harder to get, so it keeps, it makes the currency strong. And so what Germany did, what Japan did, what China does is they then go out and buy foreign exchange to keep their currencies weak enough to keep their real wages and their real costs, which is mainly wages, low enough so that they can net export. Now, this is to the detriment of the population as a whole, but it's to the benefit of certain specific exporters. So the basic model is keep fiscal policy tight and then sell your currency, buy the currency of your target market. Uh, to keep your currency, your real wages low enough so that you can then net export and at the same time you accumulate reserves of the targeted export region. So Germany, for example, had something like 50 billion US dollars uh, back when that was a lot of money in 1998 when the currencies were irrevocably locked as part of the strategy. Japan probably close to two trillion in foreign exchange reserves, same as China. All right now, so the euro So what they did was they copied that model with the tight fiscal policy, but they can't go out and buy dollars. The ECB can't buy dollars or yen or anything else because that would be an ideological violation. It would make it, it would give the appearance that the dollar is backing the euro if the ECB was building dollar reserves or building yen reserves, right? Then you'd say, oh, look what's behind the euro. Yeah. The yen that they wanted their currency to be the reserve currency just, like uh, the dollar. The dollar sure. doesn't uh, build any, uh, we don't build any foreign exchange reserves. And so they just did the tight fiscal policy and didn't buy the foreign exchange. No, so no, what no, happens? Nothing. The currency no, just no, goes no, up no, to the point where your exports never materialize. You see, yeah, and, and, it, and, and as your competitiveness increases and your wages get more competitive and your exports It start to go up, the currency just gets stronger. And, and so that's where that's what's been going on now since the beginning. Where the euro was 85 to the dollar at one point, now it's 130 after being as high as 160. So in general, this policy has thwarted, has you know, so has, has kept Europe you know, from becoming the net exporter that, that it desires. And let me add one more thing, and that is, it, if you're going to be a net exporter, then you've got to own the foreign exchange of the other country, okay? And nobody has your currency. So if, if you want your currency to be a reserve currency, you have to be a net importer. Because the United States, for example, we import and we pay for it in dollars, and then so the rest of the world has those dollars. And you had Germany and all the European countries were building dollar reserves, exporting to the US and Japan and China. And so by running a trade deficit, everyone else gets dollars because they sell us tires and cars and we give them dollars, dollar deposits at the Fed. And so the dollar becomes the world's reserve currency because they're using it for reserves to drive exports. Okay, Japan, now why doesn't why isn't the yen a reserve currency? Big, powerful country, uh, second largest economy in the world, because they're a net exporter. So nobody has any yen. Everybody is short yen. When you're an exporter, the world is short your currency. So here's Europe, want it to be a net exporter, which means everyone is going to be net borrowed in euros. And at the same time, they want the euro to be the reserve currency where everybody has euros. Well, you're talking out of both sides of your mouth. It can't happen. <laughs> you're just violating the accounting identity. Penso che questo risponda anche alla prossima domanda. A cosa sono dovuti i danni causati dall'euro? Cioè, da cosa dipendono? 
I suppose that this also answers to the next question, which is uh, what are the damages created by the euro related to meaning what they depend on? Yeah, yeah. so what happens is you can, the export channel is not there. So Europe has very large savings desires, large accumulations of savings. So where can they come from? You know, any currency is just assets and liabilities. It's a simple spreadsheet. So they, so some other sector has to be net borrowed for, for the domestic sector to be net saved. And it's not going to be the foreign sector. You're not going to be able to export. You're just going to make the euro stronger. And the government's yeah. not allowed to do what's, what's it. What's the question? If you, if, when I would just look at the numbers, I think for Europe to be at full employment today, spending yeah, so has to increase by five or six yeah. percent of GDP. Yeah. So that's net spending. So that either has to come from the government cutting taxes and raising spending, or it's got to come from exports, or it's got to come from credit expansion of the private sector. The and I don't see any of those three happening under the current political leadership. And so I see it going nowhere.